Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the class today. Welcome, uh, all of you, good to see you. And um, I think we'll have uh, a few others joining us. We have um, started the recording of this lecture. So uh, this class will be recorded and the recording of course will be made available in the coursework section as well as in the e-learning portal for other students to um, listen to. Okay, so let's pray and we will get started in PC310. Uh, could somebody just uh, please unmute your mic and just say, say a quick word of prayer and we'll get started. Loving, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord Jesus, as we gathered to uh, study this administration uh, course of Father God. Uh, help us to uh, give us knowledge and wisdom of Father God. Help us to be efficient deacons and faithful ministers for you, Father God. Also, I pray for Pastor. Uh, bless him, oh Father God, as he takes his time to teach us, oh Father God. Help us to understand and uh, do well, oh Father God. We praise you, we honor you. In Jesus' name I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. All right. All right. So this is our second lecture uh, on this course. I just want to quickly take some time to review uh, what we did uh, this past uh, Wednesday. And uh, all of these, you know, PDFs uh, will be released in the coursework section as we go along. So just... Uh, um, uh, please download it and uh, just have a look at it, review the contents, and uh, and we can uh, journey together. So I'm going to quick. I'm just going to share my screen, and um, we will begin with a quick review of uh, what we did. Um, so last class, which was on Wednesday, <clears throat> we just uh, went through the course overview. Uh, what are the things we're going to look at? Uh, you know, we uh, we said, yeah, we, we'll talk about uh, good administration objectives, cover things like church, church trust and governance, and uh, a lot of different areas that we uh, that go into what we refer to as uh, the administration of uh, the church and ministry. So we're going to be we're going to be covering uh, a, a lot of ground here, and. Uh, yeah, there are two books that we referenced, but you don't have to buy it. Uh, I will just be taking in, taking some good ideas from there and sharing it with you as part of the course. Um, very quickly, chapter one, which we covered last uh, class, just to review. Uh, we discussed the importance of good administration. You know, why uh, do, why do we have such a course? Uh, where we're talking about the uh, administration of uh, the church, the ministry, you know, uh, why is that uh, very important? So we looked at it both from a biblical perspective and from a practical perspective. From a biblical perspective, we said, look, you know, God is a God of order, design, organization, and creativity. So in everything God does, we see it stamped with order and design. Um, things don't happen at random. The sun doesn't you know, rise up on the west one day and the north one day and the south one day. No, it's, it's just there is order. There is organization, all he does. We looked at some biblical uh, examples, you know, how Moses, uh, and he had to have a team of people. In Exodus 18, Jethro, his father-in-law, advised him to appoint leaders. In Numbers 11, God tells Moses, you know, bring 70 leaders and I will anoint them. So it wasn't Moses doing the work alone. Uh, in, in, uh, when, when the people of uh, Israel, when, when, they, when the Jewish people, or the Hebrew people, when they, they marched from Egypt uh, to the promised land, uh, they didn't march randomly. They all had to go in order in camps. God gave them clear instructions, you know, that which camp must go, uh, which tribe must go, and they all marched in proper order. So we see God even organizing his own people and making that journey from uh, through the wilderness to the promised land. We talked about uh, worship in the tabernacle. It was, again, very orderly. There were the priests and the Levites, you know, 
those who did work, spiritual work, and the, the Levites who took care of the tabernacle. And then we talked about David's time where uh, uh, when he was having worship going on there in the tabernacle, uh, it was highly organized, you know, about almost 8,000 people working in the tabernacle uh, to make sure everything went uh, properly, you know, during that time of worship. Nehemiah, when he had to rebuild the walls, uh, he again engaged all kinds of people and organized them so they could work together. When you come to the New Testament, and we will be looking at some of these scriptures today, we see that uh, even the church is organized. There are elders, okay, they're responsible for spiritual ministry, but God also has called those people who are like deacons. That means they're responsible for the business side, the administrative side, the organization side of the ministry. So that itself is a very valid ministry in the church. Uh, we talked about the gifts. Uh, we will look at this again today, the gifts uh, of uh, administration and helps that those are valid functions in the body of Christ. And uh, Paul also wanted order in the church. So biblically, when you look at it, there is a very strong biblical basis for developing administration organization in the church and in the Christian ministry. If you look at it from a practical perspective, we said, look, you know, there is a need, there's a demand. Uh, the congregation expects the church or the ministry to be organized and efficient. You know, we can't make excuses to the congregation saying, uh, sorry, uh, you know, uh, we are only doing spiritual ministry. No, people expect the church to be organized, to function properly. Uh, secondly, we said there are many people who are willing to use their skills you know, they, are, they may be very good in administration, they may be very good in leadership, they may be very good in organizing, they may be very good in planning. Uh, some people are very good in, uh, you know, um, doing analysis, some people are very good in strategy, whatever, so many skills, people, there are people, and they are willing to come and help the church. So we must give them the opportunity. So that's also a practical thing. And thirdly, the world in which we are living is changing. People out there are, uh, you know they are uh, they are changed. Uh, they are becoming used to technology. They are becoming used to certain ways in which we live life, and the church must be able to have those kinds of competencies to be able to relate to people outside the church. So we felt that you know we said that look, there's a practical need for administration organization. Then we said, look, what are some of the common excuses? You know, people, church people, especially pastors or leaders would make uh, to cover up or to excuse um, the lack of uh, administration or, uh, you know, we just address some of these things. Sometimes people say, oh, look, we don't have training. You know, we only went to Bible college. Uh, we learned how to preach the Bible, but we then were not trained to do administration or management. Well, there is a solution to that. Either, you know, we can get trained or we can bring people who are trained, people who know how to do that. Same way, you know, sometimes people say we don't have the means to hire skilled people. We can say that, look, uh, sometimes people are willing to volunteer. People have the skills. They can give some of their time. Uh, sometimes the third excuse we saw was, uh, well, uh, it must be done by spirit. People who are trained in spiritual matters. So we said not necessarily because there are people who are called to the gift of or the ministry function of administration. Uh, we says another excuse would be we want to focus on spiritual matters. That's fine. We, we have to focus on spiritual matters, but then the organization helps fulfill the spiritual function. So you need that backing. Uh, some may say we only want a spiritual atmosphere. And we don't want to become like the corporate world. Uh, it is good if we maintain a spiritual atmosphere, but the organization supports that, enables you to maintain a spiritual atmosphere. And we can run you know, the organization in a spiritual way, and we will see that today. And uh, we sometimes people say it's God's work. We don't need human involvement. For that, we said, well, we are co-workers with God. You know, there is God's part, but there's also our part, and we have to do our part. We are co-workers with God. So this was a quick run through of what we did last week. Today, I want us to move forward and just talk a little bit about the objectives 
of good administration. So we're not gonna, you know, move slowly. We're going to move more and more into the practical things of um, administration and so on. So what what are we trying to achieve uh, of good administration? Now, uh, to begin with, uh, let's, uh, you know, what we, uh, you know, we want to, uh, uh, define and especially in the context in which we are talking about that is church and Christian ministry when we are using the word administration uh, we are referring to this broad area of activity that uh, supports and undergirds uh, the ministry of the word and worship and prayer and nurture uh, equipping of believers in the proclamation of the gospel right so that word administration refers to everything that is done to support that ministry, the work of that ministry. Right? So when we say administration, all of the support functions, all of the activities that help the ministry of the word is covered in that, in our context. Now, uh, just before we get into actually explaining the objectives of good administration, uh, I just want to emphasize that administration in the context of the church is a spiritual ministry right? it is a ministry and it's not just a function but it is a ministry to the lord and his people so all the people who are involved in administration you know the various roles various roles whether it is a receptionist in the office or a front desk person or, you know, the accounts or HR or whatever, so many different roles are there uh, in, in, as part of the administration. We must understand it is a ministry to the Lord. It is a spiritual ministry as far as the church is concerned. Now, how can we say that? Because when we look at certain scriptures and, uh, you know, we will... Uh, we read some of this, but uh, if you just look at them again in Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 6 to 8. Um, somebody could read that for us, Romans 12, 6 to 8, if you could just read it out for us. You can just unmute your mic and read it, Romans 12, 6 to 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accord accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Mm. Thank you, Daryl. So, you know, he's talking about various gifts. He's saying basically, look, we've all been given different gifts. And obviously this list is not a complete list of the gifts that are given. It's, they're more a sampling, a representative list. The main point is whatever you've give, been given, he says, you know, do it well. But even in this short list, representative list, you find in verse seven, he talks about ministry. And that word ministry comes from the word diakonos, from which we get the word deacon, which we will see a little later. But it simply means service, anything that is done to serve. Right? So administration is like it's a serving uh, organization, serving. We also see the word leading. Leading means to be in the front and you know take things forward. So leading could happen in so many areas, you know. Uh, so you're saying, you know, lead. So leading doesn't always have to be in preaching. It could be in so many areas. Somebody's leading is up in front, taking charge and moving things forward. So he says, uh, if that is your role, that is your function, do it well. You know. So what we're saying is there are these functions which may not necessarily be spiritual, but they are ministries in the church. That of ministry of leading. In Romans 16, that same word, uh, diakonos, is translated servant. And it talks about... Uh, this uh, lady Phoebe, uh, and, and, and Paul says, you know, she is a servant of the church. She's a deacon of the church, a minister of the church. 
So, and he says, you know, she's taking care of some matter, some business, you assist her. Uh, let us turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Uh, this is uh, just to quickly review some things. We saw them last week. I mean, not last week, last class, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Can somebody read that for us, please? And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Mm. So, verse 28, God has appointed. Because God has put this. That's why we are saying it's a spiritual ministry. God has put this in the church. And, of course, he talks about apostles and prophets and teachers and miracles and healings. But then he says, helps, administrations or governments. You know, So the word help simply means to aid, to assist. So anything, any function, anything that is done to aid and assist, it is God appointed. So the accountant is assisting with managing the finances. The, uh, you know, a librarian may be assisting with managing a library, uh, whatever. You know, there's so many people who are assisting in so many ways. It's a, it is a God-appointed function. Then he also uses the word administrations. Some translations, it's uh, governments or leaders or guides or organizers. You know, they the, the, the word, the, real, the root word simply means to steer a ship. So can you imagine a ship? It's about to, you know, set sail. Well, somebody has to steer the ship. <laughs> you can't just let it go anywhere. And that is administration. You know, you got to steer it. You got to take it somewhere. I mean, to the place where it's supposed to go. And uh, and and he's saying, you know, such people who steer the ship, who take the ship to where it's supposed to go, they are appointed by God. They're God-appointed people, right? So that again helps us understand that administration, what we're talking about is a spiritual ministry. And lastly, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 13, uh, you can just turn there. Uh, I'll just point out something. So in this passage, very broadly, Paul is talking about two categories. Verse 1 He's talking about bishop. And he says, okay, this is the requirements for a bishop. A bishop, of course, is a spiritual leader. But then from verse 8 to 13, he's talking about deacons. And deacons, as we understand it in the New Testament, are people who are taking care of, you know, what we would call as the administrative, the business side, the organization side of the ministry. So he says there are spiritual leaders and there are deacons or business leaders, administrators, organize, organizational people. And both are godly ministries. Both are appointed by God. Right? So I want us to just keep that in mind as we will move now slowly into more and more practical. But don't forget the spiritual side that whatever we do in terms of organization and administration, it is really a spiritual ministry. Now, uh, administration, uh, and again, now I'm moving more to some of the general ideas of administration. Uh, in most uh, management uh, or business books, you know, they'll talk about it as an art and a science. And we add to it this third con uh, third thing, that it is also a spiritual gift, because we just, you know, we just uh, explained it's a spiritual thing for, uh, for us, as far as the church and ministry is concerned. So it is an art. Art means it requires certain innate uh, traits and characteristics, some, you know, something that that's there in the person, which of course can be developed further. So example would be the ability to work with people. You know, some people are better at that than others. You know, they just, they just can move and mingle with people and they just uh, seem to just understand people very well. You know, 
uh, or being sensitive to people's needs, that some people just have that, that innate uh, level of uh, attentiveness or sensitivity to people's needs. Or some people just have a sense of timing. You know, when, should I, when is the right time to introduce something? When is the right time to speak to that person? When is the right time to do something? You know, they just have that trait or characteristic. Now, uh, in administration, some of this is important, it, and it depends on the roles. You know, uh, they, you know, uh, if there's a certain role, you want to find a person who's got certain traits and characteristics that match that uh, or that uh, that role, that function. You know. Uh, for example, if uh, it, it is, let's say, uh, the human resource role, of course, you want somebody who's, who, who enjoys working with people. Uh, if, you, you know, if he feels, if he doesn't like people or, you know, what, then that may not be the role for him. But you want somebody who has that natural, we call it natural innate ability to work with people and so on. You know, so some people have that. And then, of course, it can be developed further. You learn certain, uh, you know, uh, you learn certain ways of working with people and so on. So that can be developed further. But administration is also a science. That means we can develop certain skills and it requires the skills which can be developed to organize, to plan, to establish process, to do some budgeting, to review performance, uh, to evaluate data, to analyze, to make decisions. So that's the science part of it, meaning these are skills that we can learn. Uh, we can uh, develop new skills, new ways of do th doing things. And if, of course, as the technology comes in, as there are different best practices that come in from various uh, uh, learnings, you know, we can learn them, adapt them, and use them for church and ministry. And thirdly, we are saying it's also a spiritual gift right so that means we can expect the anointing of god we can expect god to give us ideas we can expect god to guide us and give us wisdom so when we talk about this whole area of administration keep this in mind there is it's an art it's a science but it's also a spiritual gift god is involved god will help us okay i'm going to cover one more thought and then we will take some time for discussion and questions uh, before we move forward. Now, just some idea here, um, you know, especially when you look at general uh, management and organizational development and leadership studies um, in, in, you know, secular normal colleges, usually they uh, draw a distinction between leadership, management, and administration usually okay so when we when we want to understand it what happens is how, how do we understand it leadership leadership is usually providing a vision and uh, dealing with something that's very strategic at the management you are involved in planning organizing at the administration level we come down to more a little bit more fine grain detail, you're talking about scheduling, executing, how is it going to happen? At the leadership level, it's more of an influence that you exert on people. At the management level, you can motivate people. At the administrative administration level, you begin to get down to, hey, is it happening? Is it not happening? There are accountability, there are checks, there's, you know, you're looking at the actual work. Um, at the leadership level, it's usually, usually the perspective is at an organizational level, in a broad, high level. At the management, you're looking at a particular department, you're looking at a particular unit, a business unit, or an organizational unit. At the administration level, you're looking at teams, and sometimes you may even look at individual individuals, you know, going down to the fine grain, uh, to the smallest unit, which is that of an individual or maybe teams. At the leadership level, you're looking at the overall organizational performance. You know, overall, did the organization move forward? Did the organization you know, achieve its objectives? At the management level, you're looking at it from a department, a unit performance. And at the administration, you're going down to 
individual performance and say, did the this individual or individuals do it, right? But all, but all three are very important. All three have their place in the organization, and all three are important. For for our course, we are going to blend management and administration. In typical, you know, business courses or so on, you know, they would they may be draw hard and fast distinctions between uh, management and administration. But for our purposes, you know, we will overlap this too. So a lot of things we talk about will just be moving between management and administration. Uh, and uh, very often in church settings, there is this fluidity between, you know, management and administration. Unless it's a very large organization, you may have clear distinction of roles. But in most church settings and Christian ministry settings, you know, that's not the case. It's a blending of both. You know, people who are quote unquote management may also be involved in fine grained uh, things which are administrative in nature. And those who are administrative in nature will be expected to perform more of a managerial type of work uh, just because, you know, uh, the organization itself may not be that big. Uh, and so you'll have this. This, this overlapping of management and administration. That's how we will approach uh, our, our course. Okay, so before we get into just discussing here the objectives of uh, good administration, I, I want to pause and just see if there are any questions, any uh, things that people would want to discuss uh, on just what you've covered so far. Any questions, any thoughts? Okay. All right. So I'm going to go forward and uh, please feel free to, you know, uh, ask any question, any point of discussion, anytime. You're welcome to do that. So now let's uh, get into, you know, what are the objectives? of uh, good administration. Right? I, I'm not talking about in church context, Christian ministry context. What are we, what, what, what is the organization, the administration there to do, right? So, and uh, this is a way for us to capture that. What good administration will do or good organization, management and administration will do is it'll ensure the developing of people. It'll ensure the establishing of systems and the fine tuning of processes and the allocating of resources, which when we say resources, it will include time, it will include money, it will include a lot of other things that go into ministry work. It could be, you know, hardware and infrastructure, and whatever different things that are used. But it's bringing people, establishing systems, fine tuning processes, allocating resources, so that in order to ensure alignment, and we will look at some scriptures, uh, ensure alignment, so there has to be alignment, there has to be efficiency, and there has to be productivity. So you're putting all this in place. The immediate goal is, hey, you know, when I'm putting people, when I'm putting systems, putting processes, and uh, spending resources, the question, immediate question that we are looking at is, is this aligned to the ministry goal and the vision? Is it being efficient and is it being productive? So there is to be alignment, efficiency and productivity towards what? Towards the ministry goal, goals and vision of the church or the organization, Christian organization, right? So a church will uh say this is our overall vision you know we are for example we are here to be salt and light in the city of bangalore our voice to the nation of india and to the nations okay that's the overall vision you know impact india impact the city the nation and the nations overall vision 
and then there are the goals so the goals of various areas of ministry you know worship ministry has its goal children's ministry uh, media media ministry they all have their goals you know what what they're trying to achieve so the administration has to make sure people are developed systems are established processes are operating fine they're operating at their uh, optimal level and resources are being used in a nice in a proper way so that everything is aligned everything is efficient everything's productive in line with the goals and the vision right so that is the objective of administration this is what administration is trying to or working on achieving now let's spend a little bit of time on talking about the alignment right so uh, amos chapter 3 verse 3 it says can two people walk together except they are in agreement it's a simple statement can two people walk together unless they are in agreement that means uh, look if we are going to all move together in a certain direction we have to be aligned uh, we have to be in agreement right so if we are contradicting each other if you're pulling in different directions we cannot walk together we cannot make progress together right so people systems processes resources they all have to be in agreement coming together very co cohesively to achieve the goal achieve the vision similarly we have to ensure efficiency uh, in the scriptures and I'm look, and I just mentioned these two scriptures you know God uh, Leviticus 26 very interesting uh, and, and there is an there is a, a reason behind why you know God says certain things the way he says in Leviticus uh, 26 and verse 8 can somebody read that for us 26 verse 8 five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. Mm. Thank you, Stephen. You know, it's very interesting. I mean, okay, we, we just see numbers here, but if you look at the numbers very carefully, he's saying five will chase a hundred, that's 20 times, a factor of 20. So five, their efficiency is 20. But he says 10. So I've only doubled the number 10. Oh, sorry. Uh, there is a five and a hundred of you. Five, a hundred of a hundred of you will put 10,000 to flight. A hundred of you will put 10,000. This now efficiency is 100 times. Okay. I've, so on this side, I've gone from five to 100. I've, I've increased it by 20. But the net result is a hundred times more. So I'm going from a 20, 20 if you want to say a factor of 20 efficiency to a factor of a hundred efficiency because a hundred are going to chase 10,000. I've just increased by 20, but my efficiency has gone up by hundred. And so, um, you know, this increasing in efficiency. Now, I, and uh, God empowers us to do that. You know, there are many examples in the Bible. You know, one great example is that of Gideon's army. You know, uh, at one point there are like huge numbers of people. And God says, no, that too many people reduce them. And they finally brings him down to about 300 people. And he, God uses 300 people to overthrow an entire army, or armies of people who are coming against Israel. And just 300 overthrow armies so there's increased efficiency because god is behind it god is backing it up and so we need to think you know and we need to ask god god you said you know five will chase a hundred but a hundred can put ten thousand you can give me a hundred factor of efficiency of a hundred uh god how do we do it how can i bring that into what i'm doing you know give me ideas because you said we can do it you can give us a hundred fact, factor of hundred efficiency. Show me how, right? So ensure efficiency. I also ensure productivity. Product, productivity is the output. 
what is coming out, right? Efficiency means you're doing more with the same or, you know, in terms more more with less kind of thing. Productivity is like there is fruit coming out of what is happening. And God is interested in productivity. We see that in John 15, you know, when Jesus is talking about the wine and the branches, he doesn't say your branches on the wine so that the wine can look nice. No. He's saying your branches on the wine and you bear fruit. In fact, he uses the word bear much fruit. That means be very fruitful. And he says in verse 8, my father is glorified if you're very, very fruitful. You bear much fruit. Okay. So this is what our objectives are. And this is what we are going to try and learn in this course. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about developing people. We're going to talk about establishing systems. We're going to talk about fine tuning processes. We're going to learn about allocating resources. And of course, all this has to be aligned to the ministry goal or vision, whatever you are. You know, some of you may be already in church ministry. Uh, some of you may be planning to start your ministry. Uh, so, you know, wherever, whatever stage, you, you can start thinking about these things. But not only do you think in terms of alignment, you also should be thinking in terms of efficiency. And also we should be thinking in terms of productivity and achieving ministry goals and vision, right? So that's the objectives of good administration. And that's what we are going to be, uh, you know, working on or learning as we journey through this course. And the final thought for our class today is, what does it take? What does it take? So as far as administration is concerned, there are three broad areas of skills that we have to develop. Right, and which we are going to learn uh, these three broad areas. So, of course, this is related to what, I've, what we have already spoken. But if you want to look at it, you know, for a good organization, for a good administration, what are the skills that are needed? And, you know, these skills can be developed even by pastors or people who are doing spiritual ministry. In fact, it is good that people who are doing spiritual ministry learn some of these skills, you know? And uh, so uh, again, there's a need of a change in thinking uh, that, uh, you know, uh, these are skills uh, uh, somebody in spiritual ministry doesn't need. No, these are skills all of us need. Okay? So in administration, in management or organizational development, three broad areas, one is, uh, we can call them as people skills or technically you call them human skills. Saying it, it has to do with people, right? How do you nurture people? How do you develop people? How do you motivate people? How do you care for them? How do you uh, empower them uh, so that the best can come out of them? How do you manage them? How do you, you know, how do you deal with challenges in this area of people, right? Uh, ultimately, we want every person to be able to bring out, uh, every person to give their best. Uh, but it's not always straightforward. It's not always easy. There are challenges. But that is an area of skills that people involved in administration can learn and develop. Then there are conceptual skills, um, which we would also call as organizational skills, meaning how do you establish systems? So these are conceptual, meaning you're looking at certain things that are happening and you say, hey, wait a minute, uh, I can actually set up a system here. And I, that if I put that system in place, this can function better. And if I set up a certain process, fine tune it, you know, efficiency and productivity can increase. But that is conceptual. You should be able to look at something happening and then begin to design the system and think about the processes. Right? These are organizational skills or conceptual skills that uh, anybody involved uh, in management and administration 
uh, need to have and can develop, right? Just by when you're looking at things that are happening, people are there, resources need there, something needs to accomplish. Okay, you think conceptually, this is the system I need, this is the process I need, and I need to fine tune it so that it can become very quick, very efficient, very productive. So you would think like that. So for example, you know, uh, you know, let's say uh, something is happening where for, for, for a particular thing to happen, right now, A, B, and C are involved in this work. But then you look at it and you say, hey, wait a minute. I really don't need B there because B is not actually adding value to this whole thing, but B being uh, B being there, person B being there is actually causing this whole thing to be delayed by two days, and uh, person B is not actually adding any value. So then you say, okay, let's fine tune it. Let's take out person B out of this whole system and uh, this process flow. The output doesn't change, or we're getting the same output, but it's become more efficient because the whole process has been shortened by two days and uh, we don't need an additional person there. Now, that is something conceptual, organizational, because you're looking at things and then you identify, hey, that, you know, you're, you're not just taking, uh, you're able to look at it and say, hey, that, that doesn't need to be there. You know, we don't need three steps, we can do it in two steps and the same thing can happen. The output will be the same, but efficiency has increased because one less person, that person can be you, you know, moved to do something else. And so overall the organization is better because that person is helping in other ways. So those are con conceptual or organizational skills. And lastly, what we are going to learn or learn to develop are what we would call uh, execution skills or technical skills. So this is the the uh, hard stuff, meaning the the actual nitty gritty stuff, the nuts and bolts kind of thing, where uh, okay, you've got people, you've got time, you've got money, you've got other resources, maybe infrastructure, hardware, uh, all these other things available. How do you you know put all this together so that the work gets done? so that uh, you know the objectives of the ministry or the projects are accomplished um, and also you need to measure things uh, are we really achieving our goals uh, are we accomplishing things can i do certain things to improve the outcomes so these are the nuts and bolts kind of things the execution skills so broadly speaking as we go through this course we hope that there will be some things that will help us improve our people skills. There will be some things that help improve our conceptual organizational skills. And that there will be some things that help enhance our execution skills. And as these skills are developed, the overall objective is accomplished. That means we will be better at uh, developing people, establishing systems, fine-tuning processes, allocating resources, uh, and in the process, make sure there's alignment, efficiency, productivity to achieve goals and fulfill the overall vision of the church or the Christian ministry we are involved. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for today. I just want to leave some few minutes for any questions, uh, any interactions um, around what we heard today. Just again, it's more of an introductory uh, introduction to the course, what we are going to learn, what you can expect to acquire um, uh, through the course. Any questions? Any thoughts? Yes, Karen. So I have one question regarding uh, organization skills. So if we'll, uh, we'll take A, B, C, three person, to and give some work but and a and c is working nicely but b is not working uh, good 
then how the uh, left b uh, continue that work like uh, with a and c hmm. yeah so good question that's a very practical question because sometimes we see those things happening so you know if if somebody is not doing a good work uh we will have to find out the reasons right so we will have to talk to the person see what is preventing them from performing well right so sometimes maybe they don't have the skills sometimes they just will face for they having some personal problems that's why it's just impacting their work sometimes they don't have maybe the equipment they need the resource they need to do a good job you know so there could be many reasons why they are not doing a good work they're not able to uh, be good in their work so that would be the first step is trying to find out why right so once we find out why that we will need to try to help sort that out you know and help them solve it if it means giving them a new computer or maybe giving them a little bit of training so we need to do that and then ho hope that they will be able to uh, improve their work after we have addressed that if there is still no change then we have to come to the conclusion that maybe that's not the place for them right maybe uh, that is they may be better in doing something else and so that's when we move them out into something different which which would they are better suited for and either we bring somebody else in to take their place so generally you know i'm just speaking in general terms generally that's how we would uh, approach a, a situation like that right if anybody else wants to add to or you know add some thoughts there for kiran her question you're welcome to do that Else. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any other thoughts before we move? I mean, before we close off for the day, and we will pick this up next week. All right. So next week we're going to start from the very basics, or not very basic, from the very beginning. Meaning, the first thing is the setting up the organization. You know, so uh, before you get your ministry started, now some of us may join an existing organization. That is fine. but some of you may want to go and start something so we're going to address that part right so that means you need to have a legal entity in place um so we'll talk about how do you put a legal entity in place and uh, get that initial you know team of people in place and what are some things to keep in mind and i'll just share some you know some uh, learnings we've had or experiences we've had Uh, not only from uh, our, our own church in bangalore but also you know when we send people out uh, to go and start ministry in different parts you know we've all we've had some interesting experiences uh, when they go out to start a work somewhere in the you know in different part of india um, uh, certain challenges that they would face so we would talk about those things right so that's the initial stage we'll talk about it uh, for uh, you know uh, for some maybe that's not immediately necessary because maybe you're work part of an existing organization but for some that may be necessary when you are starting a church or starting a christian organization to know how to bring a legal entity in place so we'll spend some time on that uh, and then go forward from there how to develop the organization and so on okay so let's close for the day uh, i just want to Uh, invite somebody just to pray and uh, dismiss the class and bring your questions and any thoughts questions uh, we will take them up as we go along okay could somebody pray and then we will close please no thank you lord for this wonderful time to give us a father uh, thank you lord that we could learn 
today about the uh, objectives of good administration, Father. Um, I pray, Father, whatever we learned, Father, that, uh, that we would understand, Father, and put uh, into practice, Father. I pray that you would give us wisdom and ability and understanding, of Father, as we move forward uh, uh, in this course a lot. Uh, I also pray, Father, that in whatever we are doing currently, Father, that uh, we would uh, put this into practice, Father, and uh, uh, make the place uh, better uh, uh, for people, Father, and enable, I pray that you would enable us to, Father, uh, work for you, for your glory, uh, Lord, I just surrender the entire team uh, into your precious hand. Uh, holy, precious, mighty uh, name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you, sir. So have a good weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, see you again next week. God Thank bless. you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.